Hey everyone, this is Pig for Life, and today I'm doing a video review for Warpertron 01C Sly Strike, also known as Not Swindle from the Combaticons. Uh, so, this is the third member of the Warpertron 01 group, um, which form Bruticus, their Bruticus. Um, and so let's go ahead and go right into the package ring review. Uh, like I said in my previous review, this packaging that Warbatron has going on is fantastic. I, I love the the detail, the quality, um, the artwork. It just looks great. So uh, let's start off with the sleeve. Sorry, I'm trying to get this new stand to adjust. So this new uh, this sleeve has a great picture of Swindle on the front and um, Bruticus in the back. Um, over on the side we see Sly Strike WB01C, C being the third member. Um, they basically count their members as A, B, C, D as opposed to 1, 2, 3. Um, so as before this is a kind of um, collage of the different uh, boxes, the five boxes to make a scene. Um, so as you can see this is kind of like the pelvic region of of, of their Bruticus. I don't know why they make you stand it, stand it sideways. On this side all you have is Warbertron and on the bottom and top are the other box. So again overall this, this sleeve is great. Um, really nice thick quality to it um, and it fits over very snugly so but let's go ahead and get into the actual packaging itself I'm trying to get this off it's a really tight fit which is good but also annoying when you're trying to do a video review ah finally so here we have Sly Strike in his packaging. Um, a nice colored uh, artwork of the artwork we saw before on the, on the sleeve. We see a nice window that shows the robot mode of Swindle there. Um, you'll see in the bottom left here it says WB01C set. And again, that is for um, the third member. So there's really nothing on this box itself. Uh, on the side, the top, um, there's really nothing. The back has a little bit of information and shows his alt mode, which um, originally was supposed to be a, a type of Jeep, um, but uh, the, this take on it um, has gone with a um, more of a Hummer look. So I, I, looking it up, uh, I found out that he was supposed to be a Willys MB Jeep, which uh, is a military Jeep. And here we see here Warbertron, their email, if you need help for some reason, um, their Facebook page. On the side here, you get a little bit of information. You see Sly Strike, you see his number, WB01, oh, it's W01C. Uh, 2014 05, so it was supposed to come out in May, I guess. Um, and I'm actually not sure if that's accurate or not. I think it might have come out a little bit later than that, actually. Because you know, I'm pretty sure this guy just came up fairly recently. So you see his rank, which is Staff Sergeant, so they still know how to spell Sergeant. Um, action Team Marshal Master. Uh, and then at the bottom, once again, they spelled armed forces incorrectly, armed, armed forces, um, but Warbertron is making high quality third party combiners, not English books, so I can forgive them on that. So that's it for the packaging, um, really nice again, nice high quality, I'm going to go ahead and open them up from the back, put them up here. So you guys can actually see the unboxing. Let's slide it out this way. And so here we have Sly Strike in his packaging. 
And in addition to the robot mode that you saw here, you see his accessories. He comes with two guns, essentially a, a larger one and a handgun. And in the back, you'll see his um, instructions and bio cards. So let's go get those. Um, one thing to note is that uh, he doesn't come with a comic book, just instructions this time. Um, the previous two members, Airburst and um, and Heavy Noisy, who I've done a review for, they they had comic books, but um, we're starting with the third member. They don't, and I'm not sure why. It's kind of kind of sad. All right, there's the bio card with some stats. And here is the instruction booklet. Kind of sh shows the foot mode and the transformation. We're not going to need that because you guys are going to be following my instructions. Opening them up. You have slice strike here. And his two guns. All right. Finally, with all that out the way, we can get on to the robot mode review. So this is Sly Strike. Um, I'm going to start calling him by his original name in the series, uh, Swindle. And I really like this guy, um, especially his head sculpt. So let's zoom in real quick. His head sculpt, he has a bit of a smirk there. And um, that is obviously very, very accurate to the character who's um, the double dealing, double crossing Decepticon. Um, he's often described as not really having an allegiance to the Decepticons. Um, he, finds, he finds ways to try to deal with both sides. Um, but he's a Decepticon by nature in the sense that he's schemy, um, not because he has an allegiance to them. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I like the look of this figure. I think he looks really great. His face sculpt looks really good. Um, the paint apps on this one for mine were better than the heavy noisy one that I got. Take a look at him from the side and the back. side here and back to the front. Um, he actually looks a bit bulkier than I would have thought though. I, I always imagine has him as being a little bit, um, I don't know, smaller, kind of schemy than um, as opposed to a big guy. But bringing in his buddy, Heavy Noise or a Brawl, you can see that he's a lot bulkier. Um, he looks stockier. He has like um, shorter legs and bigger torso, wider torso. Um, one of the things that I mentioned in, in Brawl's video or Heavy Noise's video is I, I thought his chest was a little undersized. Uh, for a guy named Brawl who's supposed to be kind of a heavy hitter and big in strength, um, his chest looks undersized to me. Um, not from the side, but just in terms of width. But he, this guy here, he has a lot of width to him. Uh, he just looks a lot bulky. Like, look at his forearms and and so forth. So he just looks he looks like a brute, um, which I think is kind of against his character's um, design and kind of persona. But it, it looks great though. So I shouldn't complain too much. Uh, as far as his, his robot mode, I, I really like it. Um, Again, I think it really does bring out the character and the smirk um, is, is just really nice. It, it has a really nice touch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, also let me, let's go through articulation. Um, he does have a ball joint head, which is pretty standard nowadays. Um, he does have nice light piping that goes all the way in the back. Uh, he has uh, articulation at the arms, which Go all the way around, upper bicep, um, and elbow, which you can get a little bit, even a little bit better than nine degrees, maybe a couple degrees extra. He has wrists, and as with his buddy, they have all, all four of his fingers um, pinned and molded together, and no articulation in the thumb, which isn't a 
terrible, I suppose. I mean, most most figures are like that. Um, waist, he does, he can do 360, but you're probably going to be hindered a little bit by his backpack. His universal joints for his legs, or double hinged legs, so forward, he, he only gets about like 80 degrees or so. Back, he gets a little bit less, and only because of clearance issues, and if you watch my previous video with Heavy Noisy, you can, you, um, I talk about that a lot, that um, these figures from Warbertron, although overall I think they're great and detailed and have a lot of articulation, um, the tolerances and clearances are just not well planned and that limits the posability of their figures to a degree which I think is could have been avoided. Uh, thigh, upper thigh swivel, knee, you can get 90 degrees there. Actually, if you pull this up, you might be able to get a little bit more than that. Yeah, you obviously, because of transformation, you can get more than that if you have this leg filler kind of adjusted out of the way. Um, as far as feet, he has his um, toe on a ball joint, which is also on a, a hinge. So you can get a lot of good motion there. You get some uh, ankle tilt. He has a really long heel, which is good. No need for an alternate uh, auxiliary ankle uh, heel as uh, heavy noise he needed but that allows him to get some good range of motion for poses um, and unlike heavy noisy he can go forward which is great um, that really 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 bothered me with heavy noisy okay uh, I like this color too I like this kind of again these colors are all kind of military in nature um, and they, they look really good for his accessories he just has the handgun here um, really, I think that's the only place it really goes anywhere. I don't think there's an alternate place for him to put it. Um, possibly up here, he might be able to might be able to get into screw hole, but no, you can't really get deep enough into that. And then his other gun, which um, you can actually put in like this, I believe, just without with the peg as it is, and that's a little bit easier. Or you can pull out the proper handle. And try to again. You can, for this one, you actually have to push it in, just kind of force it in to the hand, close it around. It's not. It's not particularly easy to get these guns in the hands, which is really frustrating. Um, again, tolerance issues and a little bit better engineering or planning, at least for for these parts um, could have gone a long way. Uh, you can't you can't push it in straight down as with heavy noisy guns or anything like that so you do have to squeeze it in somewhere. Alright so um, since I did a comparison with MMC's Fortis um, for my heavy noise review let's bring him in here as well. So um, a little bit shorter than than Fortis but again because of the fact that I always figured him to be a little bit shorter, he's still in good good scale. Um, again, these these Warbertron figures are designed to be kind of masterpiece scale um, combiners, which is nice. It gives them a lot of height um, in alt mode, in the robot mode, and hopefully in the combined mode, they're supposed to be pretty big, which is great because I like I like big combiners, and I'm a masterpiece collector. All right, what else do we have going on here? Um, I think that's it for alt mode, except for one thing I wanted to highlight, um, and that is um, one of the things I think is, is well, let's say, so one of the things that is, is, is not really accurate to Swindle's um, robot mode is usually has a window up front. Um, I, I like this chest, I think it looks good, um, but some people who are, you know, pure-blooded G1 and want it to look just like it's supposed to, um, they might be a little bit upset about that, uh, the fact that it doesn't have the window in front. But, again, I think it looks good. Uh, one of the things that I think uh, people may like is the fact that, um, is the fact that uh, if you have the bind, um, the bind, um, uh, Alternators or Vinyl Tech, maybe I forget which one. Um, he had a he had a he was made out of a Jeep 
and um, had a grill on the front. His his the front grill on the on the front. So you can actually bring this backpack forward and peg that in. And this actually looks a lot like the um, Vinyl Tech front. Um, and really accurate to, in that sense. So that's kind of cool, it's an alternate kind of transformation um, for his robot mode if you want to do that. And then you can just close this up or something like that. But again, that's that's pretty cool. Um, I will say that this, oh shoot. This just kind of popped off. It's not a big deal, you can just pop it right back on. Uh, I will say I do have some stress marks on mine already, if you can see it here on this plastic but not a not a huge deal I just need to get this back on but um what was I saying oh so the his chest doesn't look that accurate to the series really but it does look accurate to the um the G1 toy with this kind of front here as, as opposed to the window all right, so as far as transformation goes, let's see if I remember how to do this. So I think the first thing you'll want to do is bring this grill forward and down and peg that in. Close that up. All right. Um, the next thing we'll do is get his hands away. So you open it up, and the instructions say that you have to turn it um, 180 degrees. Uh, I've been able to get it in the other way um, with a little bit of fiddling, but it, it is much easier and quicker if you just turn it 180 degrees. Well, see, like even when I turn it 180 degrees, that's not fitting in perfectly. Okay, there we go. So open up this panel on the arm. Pretty standard for Transformers nowadays to have that kind of hand. Um, and then I believe you have to lift it up like this and rotate 90 degrees like so. Actually, we'll have to, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure about that now that I'm thinking about it. So for the back, you can pull this, this, uh, these panels out and then you kind of accordion these open as, as such. And these... Um, the back, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get, oh, there we go. So, there, this roof is split into two halves, and that are on uh, this sliding mechanism, um, on here. And you want to pull this out very carefully to get it to widen the roof. So, you might want to push, hold the sides here and push on the little nubs that come out, and that will loosen that up. But again, you want to get it slid out all the way so that these screws are all the way out and to the bottom like so. Okay, so we'll show it on the other side again. Um, I think it's easiest, again, to grab these nubs, grab part of the roof and push and get it unlocked. And then you can gently move them out until they snap into place. Um, one thing I say, I will say to be careful about is that this hinge here seems very fragile. Um, these hinges here. So just be careful with that. Um, same to the degree on this, but you're not really moving this much. Um, here, since you ha you need to get some positioning to pull these out and push these in, you just, just want to be careful on that. So then you can peg these two halves together like so. All right, and you can rotate the head all the way back. All right, let's see if I remember how to do this. Um, next, I believe what you want to do is uh, you want to pull the entire front chest, not not just the the front of the car, but the entire chest forward, like so. So you get kind of a ninety degree turn, and from here. Oh, sorry, these hands were supposed to be positioned up like this. From here, there's... On the shoulders, you want to pull this out. And again, be careful here. Um, don't just pull on the arm here. You really want to pull from the 
actual shoulder joint if possible to ensure that you don't break anything. And while you do that, you want to swing these arms all the way down 180 degrees, and they'll fit into these cavities here. Um, at the same time, you want to bring the wheels all the way up. And there's tabs here that go into the pur purple section there. You want to tab that in like so. So when these arms come all the way down, um, the forearms fill in the the chest area, uh, the area underneath the roof. Okay. All right. Before we close that up, we're gonna get down to the bottom. You gonna close up the heel and the foot, and you're gonna rotate these up. They don't tab in anywhere, they just rotate up. Okay, on the back, we're gonna rotate the calf fillers up, like so. We're gonna rotate the inner calf down, these panels down like so. I, actually, I think those were, those were supposed to be down earlier, so that's that was my mistake. Those were supposed to be down earlier, I believe, and then maybe rotate them up now. I'm not sure. Well, we're gonna go with... Oh yeah, okay. So they were supposed to be down earlier, so the legs were completely filled. Um, and then you rotate them up. The reason for that is, that is what allows you to rotate the, the legs all the way in. So my apologies for having that mistransformed in, in robot mode. There you go, and those tab in. Then you want to straighten this out so everything kind of sits flush. And then you're going to rotate these sides down. And there's a hole that fits into the peg. Um, there's a couple actually. So there's a tab here that goes into. There's a tab here that goes into the slot. There's a little tab here that goes here, and then the the hole that goes into there. So you kind of get get every one of those pieces in place like so same thing on the other side again this tab will go here this tab will go here and then this circle will go here there we go almost done I'm gonna rotate this down and in to the front. And there you have Swindle. Oh, sorry. There you have Swindle and Alt Load. And as for his accessories, um, go ahead and pull the handle back. And that can tab into one of the foots, one of the feet, not one of the foots. Um, and then the same thing here, this can go into the other side. And then you'll have the cannon and so forth. So this is uh, Swindle in alt mode. And I, I've gotta say, Warbertron's doing a great job on alt modes and, and robot modes, honestly. They look good. Um, it is a little bit messier in the sense that you have these kind of random hinges and you know, stuff here that is a little bit more, I guess, kibbly than with Heavy Noisy, at least more noticeable. But he looks like a good, you know, alt, um, Hummer, you know, all-terrain kind of vehicle. This, this stuff in the back kind of bothers me. The use of the feet to fill in this here, it, it just doesn't make sense. Um, it doesn't really look right. That That's probably my biggest complaint. The back side here looks pretty bad. But from the side and from the front, he looks pretty good. Um, the roof, I mean, it's fine. Bottom, uh, again, you see, his, you don't really see his legs all that much unless you you already know that you're looking for a robot. So overall, he looks pretty good in, in alt mode. Um, one of the things people have complained about that I'd seen in promotional pictures before was, was there, there was a a piece that attached to the front, um, and that really allowed Swindle to mount his cannon on his shoulder in robot mode. And I guess you could possibly do it 
I, I don't think I, you could see it in, um, you could mount it there in alt mode just because the back here, you might have been able to pl plug this one in there. But not not a huge deal for me. I do wish that, that it could plug in to the shoulder in robot mode. But um, I know, I think um, Killinger, Dr. Killinger, um, he made one of his own. Um, he's a great guy, so definitely check out his page um, if you haven't already and his accessories. I've done a review for some of his stuff already, and we'll do a few more in the future. So again, not really accurate as far as G1 goes because it's a different um, model um, vehicle that it's going off of. But I think as, a, as far as the modernization of the figure, which this is as well as Heavy Noisy, um, I think this looks great. So I, I have no real complaints there. Um, the cannon, I wish, I don't know why they did purple here. Um, it's weird that they have different colors for the, for the guns. This is the only gray of this color, I think, and on the entire figure, probably. Oh no, here, there's some here. But overall, um, overall, I think he's he's a great, great alt mode. Um, and I'm not a G1 diehard where everything has to look exactly G1. As long I, I prefer modernization, so uh, I like it, and I like how it rolls rolls really well. So unlike heavy noisy, these are actually wheels that you can roll. Okay, let's go ahead and get him back into robot mode. So you're gonna want to pull these panels up. Be careful here again, um, just because of these tabs. Uh, you might want to open up this tab from the side here, because if you just try to pull it open, I think you're gonna break that hinge. Open up the front. Um, so once you have that done, you can pull out the legs. Fill in the back of the legs here. You can pull down the toes and push out the heels. Both sides. You can split the legs at really any point. And then here's where you properly pull down these panels on the inside to fill in the inner part of the leg. Straighten that out. Now you pull out the arms. Shoulders, well, actually, you should pull that out first and then rotate this all the way. Sorry, so these were down like this. So, unpeg and rotate the arms up, and then these peg in to the top. Bring the arms down and around, put up the panels and get out the fists. Rotate them 180 degrees, close them up. See them on the other side. Put out the panels on the forearms, get out the fist. Close them up and rotate 180. Um, here you're gonna pull out the chest. Pull down the chest 90 degrees. Snap that in. And then you're just gonna pull up just the front part of the, of the grill to go back. Um, before you do that, you can rotate the head out. And I'm going to take a quick cut here because I want to show um, alternatives for the backpack. So with the backpack, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, always you kind of want to fold this in and fold this these back. So um, fold these in and fold this back. But there's a lot of different things you can do with the backpack itself. So I think the instructions, if I'm not mistaken, just keep this pegged in and have these folded underneath and have that back and fold this this front grill back like this, which I, I don't think is a, the best way you could do that. Um, first of all, they don't even talk about um, how the, how the um, back panels kind of collapse. So, um, while this is the correct, I guess, quote unquote correct transformation, I don't think it's the best all transformation. So let's pull this back up. Um, so first of all, let's separate these and push these in. So again, 
be very careful here. Support this and then um, push on the sides here until it goes in. You'll hear a satisfying snap for the most part, usually. Uh, I didn't hear the snap that time. I may not have gone all the way, that's why. Okay, sound must have, must have gone all the way in. So this one, same thing. There you go. You heard the snap that time. I, I don't think this one actually went all the way in now. Um, but you'll you can tell because these screws go all the way back. Same thing on this side. These go all the way back in here. So I think the best way is to kind of accordion all this in. Um, you know, Mgo from uh, another reviewer, he basically pushes everything in and collapses it on the double hinge so that these pieces go in as, as close as possible to the body and kind of like flip this back and flips this back somehow. I forget exactly how he does it, but he does something like that and that's actually pretty good. From the front, you, you don't see too much um, or I think he might go something like this. I'm not sure, but um, that that's not a bad alternative. Um, I don't like breaking up the back that much though, so what I do is I keep it together like that, and I do try to push it in as much as possible, but what I do is close up the grill and rotate it all the way back in, like so. And then I push this little grill piece to close up the gap on, on in the neck. And um, if you want, you can close this up like this. That, that actually, um, that's actually how I like it. So I, I flip up the panels and close that up so you don't have like just weird empty space here. If you do that, um, I think this is the one that leaves the least amount of gap. So you don't have the gap in the neck here. Um, you don't see the grill. The, you don't have gaps in between the, the, the roof. Um, and you don't get too much view from the front. It still, still looks pretty good from the front. So that's my recommended way. You guys can do whatever you want with it. Um, and again, if you want, you can always bring the chest forward and do kind of the the Binaltech alternators chest, which looks pretty cool. I, I, I almost like this one better than the official transformation. But that's neither here nor there. So let's go back to the way I like to transform it. Again, pushing that all the way down and in and closing out the gap with this little grill piece, folding this up. I mean, that I think that looks like the, the neatest way. So again, if we had the um, originally designed, I guess, chest piece, uh, or uh, shoulder mount piece, it, this would go on kind of like here, uh, I believe here, which would give a more accurate representation because he usually does have that shoulder cane in there. But for me, um, it's not a deal breaker. I'm sure somebody will make a small piece that that you can do that. So you'll just have to pay, you know, 10 bucks or something like that to get, get that piece. So going over to final thoughts, um, what do I think of Swindle? Uh, I, I really like Swindle. Uh, I think he is, um, so far, from what I've seen uh, of Airburst, I think I'm gonna like Swindle most out of the first three of the Warbertron series. Um, I love the smirk. Um, I think it, I think he's the one that invokes the most nostalgia when it comes to the character and, and really embodies the sleaziness um, personality that you think of when you see um, swindle. I think overall he looks really good. Again, my, my complaints with these figures are kind of the clearances um, and tolerances, both with you know the guns and them not being very easy to fit in, with the articulation. Again, you can't really, you can get more more range of motion, but a lot of that is still kind of hindered. Um, you get more articulation, the heavy noisy with the feet as well, so you get more dynamic posability. Um, I think he does a better job overall with his transformation, although I think his alt mode is a little kibbly. Um, I think his robot mode is, is quite good though. But uh, overall guys, I, I would recommend him 
Um, even if you don't want the whole combined form, I think he looks really good. Uh, Swindle is always a fun character for me. So uh, I think he's worth picking up even at the full price of $90. I think he's um, a stronger um, figure overall, even if you don't want the Combaticons um, to form Bruticus. Uh, as I said in my previous video, I did start a new website called PickForLifeReviews.com as well as a Facebook page called Pick for Life Reviews, uh, which we'll have links for in the description. Um, definitely, you know, like me on that. Um, you know, hit me up uh, if you have any questions about any of my reviews or have any suggestions uh, either at the website, the Facebook page, or in the YouTube comments uh, or messages. I'm always, I'm always trying to listen to everyone's feedback and um, if I did something wrong, uh, I'd love to get corrected. I don't want to um, provide bad information. But if you like the video guys, rate it, subscribe, and share. Uh, until next time, have a good one.